All right, it's, this is about the model initialization. In previous versions, we've been able to use a configuration uh, parameter to initialize an entire model to a certain water elevation. For example, uh, the configuration parameter here is zref equals, and then you put that value that you want to initialize. So if I was to use the configuration parameter zref equals 300.5, any node that had an invert below that would be flooded at time equals zero, the beginning of the model, to a water elevation of 300.5. Now this is, you know, might seem a little bit cryptic, right, that you go to a dialog and enter a special word, and in fact it's such a powerful and commonly used feature, you know, we've moved that now to the hydraulics job control. So you no, lo you no longer need to use the configuration parameter to do so. You can instead tick an initial water surface elevation and then add that to the value that you would want here in the dialog. If you didn't want to apply it, you could leave the value here. You could just uncheck the initial water surface elevation. So the configuration parameter still exists. You could still do it this old school way. So of course, if you open a model from a previous version that had that configuration parameter, fair enough, you know, it would still work the same. But for future models or instead of the configuration parameter, you could go in and you could tick this box. It's more heads up, if you will, for a model reviewer or when you pass the model on to an, uh, some other user, he'll directly be able to see without querying <clears throat> a more hidden part like the configuration parameters, uh, what value that you've been using. So I have a model that I could uh, demonstrate this with and maybe make it even more clear, especially for any new users. So let me switch back to my software. This is a uh, model of both hydrology and hydraulics. So in the runoff mode, I can see that there's this Basin 6, Lake 9, for example. Basin 6, Lake 9 has several different subcatchments being used. If I remember correctly, I've made this model many, many years ago, the subcatchment number one represented all the lake areas and the area around a lake that would directly drain to it. Number two was wetlands and wetland areas. Number three was um, golf course. Number four is road and right-of-way. And number five was residential parcels. So there was some meaning placed to subcatchments one through five, but you know that meaning is up to the user. You, you definitely don't have to follow some convention like that, but this model did. This model was, uh, is from around the Fort Myers area of Florida, and hence it's quite flat, and a lot of the lakes and ponds uh, are required to have initial water depths in them, uh, basically because they would each have different control elevations and or, you know, the water table is close to the surface. It's possible to go to each node and supply an initial depth. So if you have an initial depth supplied into each node, you know, that's definitely doable, but of course you have to use the invert, and then the initial depth would give you an initial elevation. So if you know your initial elevation, again, you have to do the math, and you can go to each node. That can be quite laborious, right? So different nodes may have different starting elevations, this one is 15.5, and in order for it to start at elevation 19.5, I have an initial depth of 4. So in this other lake here, I had an initial depth of 5. So it's not like I can quickly copy and paste the depth, so therefore I uh, need to have an initial elevation applied. And so in the past, that would be accomplished by using what we call a configuration parameter uh, called ZREF equals, and then in this case it would be 19.5, and I could add that to the list. Now, 
it's a, it's a little bit cryptic, I suppose. You know, maybe you might think, oh, that's just for advanced users. How do I even know about configuration parameters? They are available in the help, so if you went to the help, you could learn more about them. But of course, what I'm showing you today is that this is no longer required because you can go directly to the hydraulics job control and you can supply an initial water surface elevation and you could put in that whatever that elevation is, so 19.5. To prove the point with you, let me um, make it a much shorter duration. There's no need to go all that that duration. It'll just, uh, just take too many more seconds, so I'll shorten it. And I'm going to copy and paste that the initial depth is zero, right? I'm going to give everything an initial elevation with that new parameter choice in the job control. And so I'm no, no longer required to put an initial depth everywhere. So I'm just going to click on that and copy and paste it. Control A to select all the nodes, Control V to paste. But of course, you know, right click has paste. Uh, you can paste with the edit menu or paste with the icon on the toolbar for paste. So now uh, all of these have an initial depth of zero, but I'm using that parameter to supply an initial water surface elevation. So let me quickly go and solve that. That first progress was for the hydrology or the runoff mode. Now the hydraulics is solving. So if I select this lake, for example, and I choose review results, we can see that it started at elevation 19.5. Now that's not derived from the actual node data, right? Because its invert is 14.5, yet it started five foot deep when its initial depth was zero, but that's because of that parameter that I mentioned. Of course, other lakes will be similar. Right, since it's a global parameter, everything starts at 19.5. So the limitation of this feature would be that you cannot have different starting values. Uh, there's only one initial water surface elevation that can be applied. However, if locally you did need something different, for example, this um, wetland right here has a control structure Perhaps the control structure in here would keep this wetland with a half of a foot in it, then I could definitely put an initial depth here. And because it's um, a local value, it would override the global parameter. If ever you're interested in a summary of all of the initial values that are run in the simulation, you could always go to the 1D log to the, well, I'll just search for the word initial and search a few times and then there's going to be a table for the initial uh, levels. Here we are, initial model conditions. You can see that for the bulk of them, they're all starting at 19.5. There's a few that actually start higher just because their invert is higher or because they had a local value that would be uh, greater than uh, that 19.5. But nothing below 19.5 due to the fact that I use that parameter.